process of building this piece, you were familiar with Larby's work, but were you ever sort of suspicious of all of these ideas and all of these different kinds of movement styles, different kinds of instruments, different sound scores we were going to hear, you were going to deliver? Was, was there a part where you're sort of like, how's it all going to hang together? Well, I think uh, one of the very, very uh, clear signatures of Larby is that he doesn't think in genre. And so I haven't ever experienced with him something other than this, that there's, that it's sticking to a specific um, style or a specific direction. It's always a collage, and uh, I think that we don't even think of fusing or bringing together or uniting. I think it's more just an obvious um, production of working together and creating together in a certain atmosphere. So um, I, I admire it and I, I learn from it, but I'm, I'm not surprised by it. Um, because because it it's what he so so is so good at. So your background uh, originally Lindy Hopper and Charleston. Um, so can you just talk a little bit about how um, that experience feeds into or what you're leaving behind when you start to do this kind of work? Lindy Hop is also something which is is sexy on my CV. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it's one of the directions, but it is the er earliest direction that I took as a dancer. Um, quite quickly, I was very fascinated with the um, anthropology of, of African-American dance forms. Quite specifically, I was wondering why, uh, why there weren't any black people in Lindy Hop courses or on the dance floor. And I, and I started to research this and, and look. And this brought me to, uh, to the whole heritage where I, uh, where I um, studied and learned the history and, um, and also acquired. Uh, and so quite quickly, I got into rhythm dance forms and, and hip hop. And hip hop is also a dance form which is uh, easily abstracted. Uh, it's a good st storytelling dance form. Um, and it's also very soulful. Uh, so I think a combination of these dance forms is very easily eclectically incorporated into contemporary dance, especially how Larby works, because what, what Larby is also brilliant at with us is to take the material that we offer and, and to compose it. Sean, Palabalus was here two weeks ago. You danced with Palabalus for uh, several years. Very different uh, kind of sensibility. You've been living now in Belgium. Could you say something about you know, sort of going from the Palabalus mindset and coming into the Eastman mindset and if they feel very different or the things that connect them for you? Yeah, so I danced full-time for Palabalus Dance Theater for seven years. Um, I left I guess, 18 months ago, a year ago or something to join uh, Larby in Belgium. I, I was just speaking to someone early, uh, last night uh, about how there, there can be something that transcends the choreography as a, sort of a feeling or, or a, a place that you go to as a performer. And uh, I think it's interesting because I think Palabalus teaches heavily to go to a state, uh, go somewhere else and be something else, and to arrive in that state and bring that to the audience. And there's not a lot of choreography in Palabalus. <laughs> and uh, with Larby, there's a lot of choreography, and I, I'm glad that I had this uh, rich, intense training uh, of arriving at a state of being that I can then apply as a layer to complex, intricate choreography. Yeah, maybe you could just say something about um, how you're making the distinction between the choreography for Palabalus and in and, and the work that we saw tonight. I think there's like a section in, in this piece that's three minutes and it has like 700 different shapes that you have to hit inside the three minutes. <laughs> and like every single eighth note is choreographed. Mm -hmm. Tuck, 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 tuck. It's his fault. And then there's the body percussion that where also every eighth note is choreographed. And in both of those sections, if you mess up, it's obvious you're supposed to be symmetrical with someone or worst case scenario, you're like stomping on the ground loudly out of rhythm. So with that sort of specificity, I... It's not, uh, this is a generalization, but um, I, ma I made f 50, 15 works for the stage for Palabalus and maybe another dozen for film and media. And um, we, we talk a lot more about uh, like a spirit or a, a feeling or something like this that we, we train 
more probably in improvisation and working together and working in close proximity with one another than we do in the specificity of an angle being here, then there, then there, then here. Mm -hmm. um, but in this company, it's rich because you work with, with both. You know, it's not, not one that one is missing or something. So, Johnny, I want to ask you about, I think um, you have a, the wonderful opportunity to show off how talented dancers are in a variety of ways in this show. Could you say something? I, I guess I'll start with the talking trio. So you come downstage and you start talking. You've got two dancers behind you. Could you talk about uh, two things? First, just simply the effort of learning, memorizing, performing, but also the kind of physical labor of you've just been dancing full out, and then all of a sudden you have to come into this very different place and, and be talking very seriously? First of all, it's, it's a matter of, of, of course, very obviously intense repetition because there are two, two pathways of memory uh, collaborating at that moment. So also I try very hard to act what I'm speaking. It's a text from, from Noam Chomsky and it's, I think, a very important text. And I have the pleasure of having said this text probably a thousand times now. And it, it works as a mantra where I really start to understand nuances of the meaning. Um, and I, I, want to, I want to give that um, the richness that it deserves. And so I also try and act. But like Sean was just saying, the choreography is very specific. And it's actually very angular and staccato. So it's in contradictory to how I'm trying to speak. Um, this was a really tough process. Uh, uh, Fractus started with three people, me, Dimitri, and Larbi, and we spent hours uh, learning that. I was also a little bit um, uh, younger at learning specific choreography at that moment. I took a long time. Uh, Larbi is in the back trying to reach around two muscular guys, uh, which is super awkward, and still trying to be elegant with the hands. and. Uh, it, it was very awkward, uh, and we needed hours of not getting frustrated at each other in order to accomplish that. And I'm thinking about um, the kind of shifts that you have to do as performers from full out dancing to talking, but then also kind of what we would consider perhaps more virtuosic to then schlepping around pieces of set. The music helps a lot with that because, of course, music is, is organically um, changing our state. It's, as a dancer, the first thing that I learned to react to. Um, but then it's also, it's acting, it's embodying a character. Cardiovascularly, it's very difficult um, because the dance moment before um, the Noam Chomsky text is, is intense. Um, uh, and, and so it's also a matter of, of being in shape and breath control and, and also having enough cadence, enough rest before it starts. Um, and that moment, the cadence between the transformation, it's my favorite moment before it starts where I have to become something where all three of us who have just danced have to become something else. And that happens in the rest while we catch our breaths. I don't know if I want to call you a victim, but you are a victim of, of the um, gun violence in this. Uh, and you have stepped into this role. Um, could you say something about having seen it first from the outside and then what it's like to move into it and how it feels? When I saw the piece, I saw on stage um, five dancers and four musicians that I really admire and look up to and it was incredibly inspiring for me. So I was, uh, per personally I was really moved by the piece and um, there are violent sections and there are moving sections and um, so I, I admired the piece. Stepping into it was um, really difficult. I, I had three days of rehearsal uh, and I, I mean, unfortunately um, there was an injury and Larby called me and he said, I was in the States actually for work and he said, can you get on a plane tomorrow to Belgium? And I was like, oh, I'm supposed to have 10 more days here. So I said, hey, how about I have the weekend? <laughs> Anyhow, so I showed up and luckily I had these guys to guide me through. Um, they were very, very patient with me and um, again and again and again. So that was a challenge. The, the violence, I think it's a physically very demanding section. Um, so there's that element of it. I think that it is very, uh, I really connect with it because I, I think it's a very difficult section to watch and I think that it for me relates to 
the gun violence that we, we see guns everywhere in the news and we see gun violence is, is incredibly prevalent. And some people say that this section is too violent and it's too much and it goes on too long. And I, I think compared to what we see in our news feed on our iPhones that you, oh, 10 people dead scroll by, oh, another 12 people shot there. We're so inundated with gun violence that if we don't see it in a shocking way sometimes that we need we need to be we need to feel this violence for the horrific thing that it is. So it's difficult to perform for a number of reasons. It's difficult to go into. It's difficult to watch, and I think it's really important because of that. We embody many different characters and many different um, sources in throughout the piece. Um, which is difficult. It's difficult because in one role you're giving and in the other you're extremely violent. But I think something which is helpful about the, the projection of the scene is that it is a commentary on violence. So the thing itself is inspecting um, its source uh, and, and is trying to, to extrapolate something out of that in order to expand the mind of, of how we view it. Um, and so in that way, for me, it's really easy to step in to because, uh, because I'm not portraying it for the, sake, for, the, um, for the sake of violence as entertainment or um, shock, but instead as this happens and we're confronted with this daily and we're completely desensitized to it, um, except suddenly on stage, it's really shocking for us. Um, so in that way, it's... I think it's powerful, and I also find it correct in that moment. Could you talk a little bit about the singing and your experience of diving in? Well, my, my experience is that uh, that larvae does not give up. <laughs> and um, we, we were doing, we practiced a lot of songs, and uh, originally there were two other songs that were very hard. Uh, they didn't make it. Uh, these were the ones that in the end were, were beautiful, but also we could sing because, um, and we, we practiced and we still practice every day. We practice the singing much more than we practice the dance. Um, we do it as, as a ritual. Um, and it's also, I think, something that is, that is in Larby's heart is Corsican music uh, and also medieval music. Um, it, it surrounds him and, and I think he loves it. Uh, and he fought, he fought, because we, we aren't all musicians and all of the musicians aren't singers. Uh, we had lessons, uh, it was lovely. Um, and we've gotten more and more in tune, plus we have a really good sound guy. <laughs> As I am uh, getting deeper and deeper into this company, I'm really appreciating the use of live music and live uh, singing on stage as an integral part of the performance. I think that it's uh, a significant uh, difference between American modern dance and European modern dance. I think that uh, Larby brings a particularly interesting um, strain of musicality in with his um, diverse upbringing and background. And uh, it's been a great challenge for me learning to sing in Lingala and Arabic and uh, French and Latin. Um, but it's, it's been really expansive, and I, I think it's a reflection of how he perceives dance as well. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, 